What's going on? Move the Mouse here, back in City Skylines with a brand new season of Let's Play. And today they announced Green Cities was coming to consoles. It's available today on Xbox, but unfortunately for those of you on PlayStation 4, you have to wait until February 5th. There is the option to buy a second season pass. Now, I'm not sure the exact details behind that, but if it's structured like the last one, there's going to be a few DLCs and some smaller content packs. So I would assume that Park Life and Industries is coming to console at some time in the future. But and unless I missed something, I didn't see any specific details. If you do have any additional details, please point me to those in the comments down below. So let's dive into Green Cities. Let's get a new map started and start off a new season of Let's Play City Skylines. So we'll kick off a new map. And in this case, there are three new ones that come with the Green Cities expansion. You have Eden Valley, Garden Rivers, and Lavender Lake. Now they all have similar distribution of resources, so you'll find oil or farmland, as well as plenty of forest. And they all have similar outside connections, so there's nothing that's limiting you in your build. You have external connections for highway, rail, shipping, and air. Although I think for this one, we're gonna choose Garden Rivers because it's got a nice tropical theme. And let's get a nice tropical name. Santa Palma, Las Cruz, Las Palma, Santa Rico, I'm gonna take that. Now they changed the menu around on consoles a little bit as a part of this update. So some of the things that you see here uh, on the PC, you would access through mods underneath the content manager, but you can turn on things like unlocking all milestones, unlimited money, unlimited oil and ore, and something new to the consoles, which is unlimited soil. So you basically can landscape all you want uh, with no limitations on moving dirt around. So you can really reshape the map if you wanted to. But we're gonna leave everything default. We have random disasters off for this particular build because we're not talking about natural disasters. We really wanna focus in on green cities with this series. Now I will have a separate video, which is kind of a how-to green cities if you just wanna know how those new components work if they're new to you. But in this particular series, we're gonna be doing a long form let's play and really building things from the ground up. So if you're new to the game, this is probably the series for you. So let's go ahead and kick things off and start off season two of our let's play series here, focusing in on the green cities DLC that just came out today. For those of you that are returning fans, I hope you'll bear with me while we review some of the basics for the newcomers. But the very first thing we wanna do when we start a city is hit the pause button. It's the space bar on PC or clicking the left stick in on consoles to stop the passage of time. Now the reason that we wanna do that is because everything that we do, building roads, pipes, everything is gonna cost us ongoing maintenance. And if we don't have any people living in the town, we're not generating tax revenue, so we're just wasting money. So the very first thing I wanna do is I wanna pull up info views and look at the water. And this is our first kind of challenge with this map is that there's not a lot of water flow happening over here. You can see just a tiny little bit. So we're gonna wanna put our water intake way down here in the corner of the map and put our uh, sewage a little bit further up because there's not a lot of water flow in this little bay here. I think out of necessity, we'll buy that tile as our, our second tile, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So the very first thing that we need to do is come up with a way on and off the highway. Now, right now we've got only the most basic roads unlocked. So just a, a simple two lane road. What we can do though, is we can build one little segment of road and then we'll hit the X button to bulldoze it and get rid of it. But what that does is that unlocks some other roads. So now we have four lane roads, six lane roads, and most importantly, two lane one way roads. Now I'll show you something real quick that I used to do to start off a city, which is a really simple triangle intersection. So for example, if I go out 20 units this way, that's two long lines and then over 20. And then we connect those two points. We can make a nice 45 degree angle and we could, if we wanted, you know, delete this. So that's the way that I used to do things way back in the day before we had degree markers. So that's a way off the highway, a way back on the highway. And then you can start to build your town out down here. Maybe connect these two with a road. Probably a good idea. And we can build off of that. Now that was one way to build a real simple triangle intersection. An even easier way to do that now is that you have angle markers on everything I think except for the Switch version right now. So when you're building a road, you can actually see 
if I want a 45 degree angle, I can actually come out to 135, which is 45 plus 90, and that'll build a nice straight angle for me. So that's not a bad way to start your city, but there's a better way and something that I've been doing in more recent builds. So let me reload that so we don't waste any money and we'll repause the game. But what I want to do is I want to go into the curve tool. I'm going to come out about 10 units and I'm going to do as best as I can a 90 degree angle off of this road up here. So with the curve tool highlighted, I'm going to come out 10, down 10, and curve it around like this. And what we're going to be able to do here is have a nice little rotary coming right off the highway. Now, this is just two lane roads for now. It doesn't support fast moving traffic, but it doesn't create intersections that are going to stop traffic, which is good. Now, we'll go back to our straight tool and I'm going to connect from here to this node coming in. And I'm going to connect from here going out. So we've achieved the same thing that we did with that triangle intersection, but it's going to be much smoother traffic flow for us uh, to be able to get people in and out of the city with minimal intersections. Now, I do want to, at some point, get really loose with the neighborhoods and kind of work with the shorelines, but for this immediate area coming off the highway, we're going to get a bit of a grid going to start just to keep things simple. And uh, as we progress, we'll, we'll get a little looser with it. But basically what we can do here is we can build off of this. Now, if we want this to kind of be a, a main main street, if you will, to support a lot more traffic, what we can do is we can do a four lane road here. Now, just to size things out, I'm gonna come out 20 units to start. I'm gonna switch back to my two lane roads. I'm gonna build a little neighborhood here. Now. The four lane road takes up more space than a two lane road does. So for example, if I extend a two lane road out this way, you're losing a square of zoning on either side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out 12 units. So that's a extra two clicks beyond that big line. And that's gonna leave us this little bit of space of zoning in between right there. So we could do things like pedestrian paths or you know, other little uh, power line connections running through here without eating into a lot of the zoning. Now, I'm going to come over 30 units this time because we don't need tons of intersections. We want our intersections to be spaced out a bit. And that will give us a pretty good start. I'm going to then connect this down, say, 30 units for now. And let's build us a few neighborhoods up here to move some residents into. We don't want to go too crazy with the money. I'm going to try and stay above 50,000. So let's get one more block here. This time, since the roads take up a little less space, we can go out 11 units. Let's do it over here because it's snapping me to the highway over there. And this will achieve the same thing. We're getting a little bit of zoning space to run stuff through the middle without eating up into that zoned area. So that should be fine to start. We want to give a little bit of room for our citizens to move in. We also want to give a little bit of room for power and industry. Now, it gets expensive, but we will do a four lane road over here for future expansion. We'll come out two units. Again, same thing we did over here. And I'm just going to do a couple little um, small roads up here. Now for this, I'm not going to run power through here, so I'm just going to do the bare minimum. I'm going to go up 11 units and over to there. Well, let me put it. Let me go where I want to go. There we go. The zoom way in to get the precision. I've been jumping back and forth between the PC and uh, and console, and definitely there's some things that are a little bit easier with keyboard and mouse. One thing that is not as easy is kind of slow sweeping camera movements. Um, you can do it with the middle mouse button, but it's a lot easier on console with the sticks. But that's a small concession. Um, overall, PC version is definitely uh, appealing in a lot of ways, but I want to focus in on the, the console version in this case for a couple reasons. One, because it's new DLC that people might just be getting access to for the first time. Those of you on PC might have been playing Green Cities for quite a while at this point. But also the nice thing about console version on 
YouTube is the fact that it's very easy to see that bar down at the bottom. Uh, it's very easy to see from a couch across the room, um, and it uh, shows a little bit better, especially if you're watching this on a mobile phone. Okay, so we've got some zones picked out. I know what I want to do with them. Let's get our water in next. So the way water works, and apologies for those of you that are returning, but I want to keep this uh, accessible to the newcomers as well too, is basically water has a flow. So we can hold the Y button or triangle button on PlayStation, go to info views, and when we have water selected, it'll actually show us the flow of the water with those little triangles. So we have very little water flow here in the bay, but we've got a little bit of movement. So we want to pick up the water down here and dump our sewage down here. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be a little expensive. I've found that, unfortunately, Green City maps overall aren't the easiest from a money-making perspective. Um, also, some of the policies that you can put in place to make buildings more eco-friendly and efficient end up costing a lot of money. So, green, if if this is your first experience with the game, I definitely recommend not focusing on the Green Cities content, focusing in on just the base kind of vanilla content at first till you get a handle for that before worrying about trying to make a really eco-friendly system. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to pipes and we're gonna connect these two up. We're gonna bring it over to our neighborhood, maybe right, right here and we can start our grid off of that. Now, if we want nice perfect coverage without wasting a lot of space what we can do is we can come 440 units up and that'll do this nice little overlap let me show you that we're going to come over here so that we're just covering the edge of that industrial zone and from here we're going to go up another 440 units and you see that when I come over at a, a perfect right angle, it has this tiny little bit of overlap that's just right. We'll extend this pipe out just a little bit to cover those last couple squares of the industry area. Now, unfortunately, I messed up a little bit here and mistakes will be made. I'm not trying to hide those mistakes. Um, it would have been nice if I'd started up here instead and worked my pipes down this way because now I have this little piece of the block that's not covered up here and I can't quite build off the map yet. So we're going to have a little bit of redundant pipes right here for now and we can delete these and fix these later. So we've got water, but the last thing we need to worry about, or I should say there's two more things we need to worry about. We need to worry about power and we need to connect power so that these pumps are powered. Now, the blue bubble that you see is where power spreads to. So as long as something is powered here, if another building moves in nearby, it'll spread the power to it. Unfortunately, because we have these so far apart, we have to spend almost $2,000 just to hook up an extension cord, basically, between the two. Now over here, I'm glad I remembered this because there's something that I want to do a little bit differently over here. I'm going to redo these roads real quick. I want to come out 12 units here because this is going to be our power block. And if we do 12 unit spacing, when we plop down power plants, you can actually get power plants back to back like that. Because we're going to have a few of these as our city grows. So this is going to be our little block for power. Anywhere within that bubble is powered and we can go right in the middle here for now. And we're going to extend this across our little uh, highway intersection to right over here. And what I'm going to do is now we can switch over to zoning and give our residents some places to move into. Now, so that we don't have to run a lot of power cords. I like to call them power cords. I know they're, they're power lines. But so that we don't have to run a lot of power everywhere, we're going to have people move into this neighborhood first this neighborhood second and before they complain we should have power spreading out to here and then we can connect this down into here I don't have to connect it to that power line I could have just connected it to the blue circle but I just kind of like the way it looks connecting better now, right now, these are not connected, so power is not going to spread from there to there. But once buildings move in, 
they will help spread that power. Now I'm gonna go over to the selection tool here. Buildings will build four squares back off the road. And this four way, this four lane, two way street that I've created is gonna be kind of our main avenue. And I'm gonna build the residential neighborhoods in behind that. So I want all the businesses to kind of be out here. So we'll just paint ourselves some, uh, some commercial area for now. We don't wanna zone on the rotary. We want the rotary just to handle traffic. And in fact, let's not zone this piece. Because this is where we can put fire, hospital, police, schools. We can do a little bit of that here kind of on this block. So let me actually undo that. We'll save ourselves some space. But this way we can get a nice little kind of commercial downtown area in our small little town as we're starting out. Now, I want the businesses to be facing the main street. So just to be safe, I'm not gonna zone these last couple tiles because buildings could move in with their face facing this two lane street. I want them facing the four lane street instead. I'm not gonna do that over here. Residents though, living back here, that's fine. If they wanna face that street, I'm okay with that. So we can zone that. But for right now, again, because we want people to move into those back neighborhoods first and help spread power, we'll go ahead and start with that. So let's go ahead and hit play. And if we hold the left stick in, we can actually speed up the flow of time. And we'll get some people moving in here pretty fast. Of course, they moved in way over there. That's great, thanks a lot. So if we bring up the power bubble now, that bubble is spreading power to those power lines, which is spreading power down there. But until they get power from over here, it's not extending that power there. So they're gonna complain about water at first. But as you can see, they're moving in really fast, so it should spread the power before anybody complains. Before I forget, let's pause it. We can go into economy and budget, and we can turn down electricity and water. Because we're making way more than we need right now, and it's gonna help us earn more money by not spending as much to keep up those services right now. Now there is a day night cycle as well too. We can bring those down, but it won't matter in this particular playthrough because for the ease of those watching on YouTube, I've got it locked to day only mode. So it's not actually gonna pass time. And let me double check that didn't change after the update. Use day night cycle is on, so let's turn that off. Glad I checked that. Okay, so those buildings are not powered yet. They will be in just a minute. Again, let's look at our power bubble here. You can see it's starting to spread. If anybody starts to complain or it goes into the red, we can run a power line down the middle of this block, but we shouldn't have to. So close here. Let's just do it. That's gonna power everybody, which in turn powers the water and sewage pumps. And we're off to a good start. So right now we are losing money. We're spending more money than we're pulling in via tax revenue. You'll see it's negative 851 right now, but it is climbing back towards zero. And that is totally fine. The three colored bars that you see in the bottom right, the green, blue, and orangish yellow are basically demand for the different zones. And right now there's still a ton of demand for residential areas. So while we have money, I'm gonna pause it again. We can think this out a little bit. We're gonna come out 12 units again to give us that little bit of negative space between the zones. And let's come out to here maybe. 11 units that time. And basically these little neighborhoods that I wanna do, I wanna prevent lots and lots of intersections with the main four lane road. So we're gonna do that. You want to turn into this neighborhood, you can turn here, then turn left or right to get where you want to go. But it's going to prevent having multiple intersections on this big road, which should keep traffic moving east to west and north to south. Eventually, we'll upgrade this to a four lane road as we start to build up to the highway as well. But those those are going to kind of be our main uh, arteries supporting the most traffic through the city. Let's zone these off as residential. We'll go to our fill tool and just fill those in. 
to be fine for now. And we'll even let people move in up here now that we've spread power around. I don't want them moving in tiny little houses right there though, so let's dezone those two pieces. And let's hit play. So they're looking for more commercial space already. There's there's plenty there, but we'll hold off on that for right now. Now you may be asking, where's the Green Cities content? Well, you haven't unlocked it yet. So basically you still have all of the base mechanics of the game when you start out at first, but as you progress through different milestones, you're going to unlock different mechanics. Uh, it might be a good time to talk about milestones. So if I hold the Y button or the triangle button on PlayStation, you can bring up those milestones and see kind of where things are at. Now, depending on the town that you're building in, depending on the base map that you started with, they might have different numbers. The, the milestone names will be the same and the things that you unlock will be the same. But for example, if we go all the way to the very last milestone, it might be 75,000 on some maps, it might be 90,000 on others, it might be as low as 36,000 on some of the natural disasters maps. So do keep that in mind, the amount of population that you have to bring in to reach certain milestones is going to be different depending on the map that you start on, but what you're unlocking at each milestone is the same. So the very first population bump we're trying to get to is 480. So basically that will unlock a couple different things for us, taxes, Ability to take out loans and a couple basic services like garbage, healthcare, and education. Now we'll get into those more specifically in a moment, but let's watch our population grow here. And as it does, as people move in, they want more places to work, including potentially some jobs in industry. So let's go ahead and set those up. I'm not going to build on this block because I'm just going to have to demolish them anyways. What we do have to do, what well, we still have a little bit of money is double check our water coverage because we don't have great water coverage down here. Some of these new neighborhoods that we spun up. So that should cover that well. Let's extend this out just a little bit so that we can get maybe one more block coverage out here. Now we are slowly but surely making money now. So that was a pretty quick turnaround. We won't four lane road these just yet. We can upgrade them later when we revamp our industry zone, but just to give some basic road network over here that we can zone off on. And we'll give people some space to build factories. Now, these do pollute and they do cause quite a bit of noise. Commercial causes noise, but doesn't pollute. And residential does neither. So you want to kind of use the commercial zones as a bit of a buffer or pollution, uh, but do keep in mind noise pollution, especially if you have later on the high density commercial zones, those are gonna be very noisy and you can use office space as zoning, as buffer zone for that. Residents don't like to be next to noise. If you do have good healthcare coverage though, they won't mind as much. They will complain, but they won't get sick from the noise because they'll be able to be cured uh, by those healthcare services. So I think we'll time lapse this here so you don't have to sit and watch this, but we're gonna wait till we get to that 480 milestone, which is coming up right in a second here. And then we can start to talk about some of those things that you first unlock that uh, your city's going to need for coverage. So there we go. We are now a little hamlet at 480 population. And again, that gives you the ability to manage taxes, take out loans, as well as manage garbage, healthcare, and education. So let's back out of this for one second. We'll pause our game so we can kind of back up and think about this for a moment. So let's look at economy. Anytime you see me bring up this wheel on console, you're holding the Y button on Xbox or the triangle button on PlayStation. Apologies, I don't know my Switch buttons, but it is a very stripped down version of the game. On the PC, there's a little stack of money in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. You can click on that directly to go into your economy tab. And that lets you get at the budget here that we talked about before. It also lets you get at taxes and loans as well as see your income and expenses. Now, for our zones here, I'm gonna set everything to 12%. It's a nice, sweet middle ground. People won't complain as long as you have good service coverage. That is healthcare, education, all those other things. 
and it's not so low that you're not bringing money into the city. If you're really in a pinch for money, you could knock this all the way up to 29% in every zone, hit the play button until you stop gaining population. As soon as you stop start losing population, you can actually rein it back in. But for right now, we'll just set it to 12% as a nice sweet spot there. Now, also in that economy tab, now we have the ability to take out our first loan at the next milestone, we'll be able to get a second loan, but that gives us a, a little bit of cash in pocket, as well as you get some every time you hit one of those milestones. But at first it's really tough. So let's consider what we unlocked and the services that come along with them. So you have garbage, healthcare, and education. Let's talk about garbage first. So with a landfill, you're gonna put that somewhere and it's going to pollute the ground where that purple circle is. So ideally we don't wanna drop it like right in the middle of our residential neighborhood. Over here in industry would be great. That's a good spot to drop it in. Um, and it fills up over time. So there are trucks that are gonna leave here to pick up garbage and that green area on the roads is where it has good coverage. You can see the further away it gets basically the the worse the coverage is. It starts to go kind of gray up on the highway up there, but, but dumps will cover a pretty large area. However, they do pollute and eventually they need to be emptied, which later on you can unlock things like an incineration plant uh, to help that out. Now, we aren't going to get immediate benefit from this because we can't turn on policies right away, but this is green cities. So let's drop in a recycling center instead of a dump. I think that would make sense. And we'll we'll tuck it away. Jeez, I don't wanna have to do this, but it doesn't make sense to move it later because once a dump or a recycling center starts filling up with garbage, you can't move it. So let's upgrade our roads and we'll just space this out appropriately. We'll go back into zoning and fix those little broken tiles that we created. And let's go drop our recycling center in there now. Now the, the problem here is that this is 4,000. This is 8,000, so already it's eating up into our money a lot. I want to say that it's 16,000 on the PC. I was just playing it this morning on the PC, and I uh, that seems cheap to me. But there is our new recycling center. So if we go over to the inspector tool, or when you have no tool selected, just click on it on the PC, you can bring up details about that. And you can see what the reserves are, how much it's processing, how many trucks are in use. You can move the building while it does not have garbage in it. So if you wanted to move it, move it now. You can open the budget panel for any particular building. And if you have more coverage than you need, you can always back the budget down, kind of like we did with water and electricity. You can rename it if you want. But there it is, our fancy new recycling center. So now we are already being greener than before and we are making use of our old garbage and turning it into new things. So we are slowly but surely making money, not a lot of it, but we'll leave it playing in the background. And let's talk healthcare. So the first building that you unlock is the medical clinic, and we're gonna drop that in over here, this little block that we saved for, uh, for zoning purposes. And if you're on a corner like this, whichever direction you push last, like that's gonna be the front of the building. So like if I want the, the building to face this way, I can drag it that way if I want it to face that street over there on the left, I can do that. And there is our medical clinic. So that has an area of coverage as well, just like the dumps. We'll pause it because we've got a power problem happening because of our budget. But if we go into info views, we can actually see what that healthcare coverage is. Anybody in the green should have no problem getting healthcare. As you go further and further away, it'll start to get gray and eventually just no color at all. You can see like the 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 ambulances can't cover that road because there's no way to get to that exit ramp without going to the highway, driving way down there, turning around, coming back. So if you get in an accident over here, they're just not going to help you. We could do a little turnaround lane right here, but it's not how ambulances need to cover the city. So as long as the, the buildings are covered, you're good. Now, while we are paused, let's bring up our economy and fix our, our power problem here. So because we've budgeted so low for electricity, we're not meeting the uh, the demand anymore. So I don't need to raise my water up yet. Let's see if 60% gets us where we need to go. 
Uh, we're still in the yellow. We'll go to 75. <laughs> Let's try 75 and take a look at that. Man, we're using a lot of electricity. And because they're not getting electricity, the pumps aren't getting electricity. So let's let's bring it way up. Oh, I'm an idiot. So something to watch out for. And and I love leaving these mistakes in here because it's things that you know to look out for. I've been playing a lot of cities. I've played hundreds, if not you know over a thousand hours of cities, and I just made a, a real silly mistake. So. There's a day-night cycle. The darker blue is night. This lighter blue is daytime. So I was not affecting the budget for my daytime cycle, which I've locked the game into. So let's go to 70%. Let's see what that does. And now it will actually affect the change when we hit play. And 70% puts it way into the green. So that was overkill. So let's go with the 60% that I was initially thinking again. You can switch between day and night cycles. Nice thing is on the PC, they're right above one another. You have to switch page views on consoles. So it can be a little bit misleading. But now that we have power spreading down there, it's also spreading to the water pumps, which just fixed our water problem there. Now, as you can see here, this is the sewage turning the river brown. We do have a little bit of water flow here, but you want to be very careful to watch that water flow when you're putting it down because you don't want your sewage before the intake and then you're intaking sewage and everybody gets sick. The last thing that you want. Uh, while we've got money, we'll bring out our roads and let's extend this down here a ways. A little more than we probably need to just to uh, to be comfortable here. We'll go back to our roads here, and I want to do the same thing. I'm going to extend this kind of grid-like network over 11, up to there, over 11. We'll square this off, and then that's the street that we're going to connect so that every, what, one, two, three streets is going to be connecting. Already got some power problems again. So the budget is something that in previous videos I didn't play with. Um, it's just it's easier just to, to kind of keep building and make a little less money and, and just keep rolling. Uh, but you can make more money if you effectively manage this. So if money's real tight at first, which it will be with green cities, as you'll see when we enable those policies. Um, it's a good way to, uh, to kind of bring a little extra cash in pretty fast. So we'll hit play again. And that should sort our power problem out again which powers our water, which sorts out our water problem. Okay, so let's zone off that new neighborhood that we've done down here. And then make sure we've got water coverage with pipes because we haven't extended down that far yet. Now, we do have the eco water outlet as an option and I should probably have considered adding that in since Dan since again, we're talking about green cities here. So let's go ahead and swap that out. Um, so a sewage drain pipe is 2,500 bucks. The eco water outlet is 4,000, but it purifies the water. So it doesn't completely reduce the pollution. Uh, you get better and better as you kind of move up. I believe this reduces 85%. I believe the water treatment plant reduces 85%. Yes, it does. And then the eco version of that that you unlock later purifies it completely. But we can help turn our water a little bit less brown. So let's come in here. We'll bulldoze this hitting X button or square or going down to the bulldozer icon in the bottom right on PC. And let's drop in our eco friendly water outlet. Now, you'll notice if I put it over here, I'm going to have to run pipes to it. Over here, it clamps onto the pipes. So it'll actually just let me build it into the water system there. So that is connected. And if we hit play, it'll take it a second. And then some water will start flowing out, but it will definitely make the water less brown. Doesn't look like it coming out of that pipe, but you can see here it's already kind of discolored the water quite a bit. We should see less impact 
thanks to that little change right there. Now, let's see if we have enough coverage though. Is that actually connected to the system? It is, because it's draining water. Is that fixing itself? So let's make sure that's connected. It sure looks like it is. And we've got water in blue, sewage in green, and it looks like it's flowing back and forth nicely. But everybody's complaining about it. It looks like it's just a budgetary problem, so let's fix that. Again, we're in day mode, and we'll throw it up to 70 and see what that does. So sewage treatment is going to be a bit of a burden because the eco-friendly versions don't handle as much water as the standard versions, but they pollute it less. So we're going to have to add in uh, a sewage pump pretty soon. Uh, a secondary one to that. But since we hit 950 population, we've also reached our second milestone, which is Worthy Village. This allows us to buy a new area, allows us to paint districts, take out a second loan, and define some policies. And we also unlock fire and police, as well as the first of our unique buildings. And most importantly for green cities, it allows us to define self-sufficient buildings and organic and local produce. So let's talk about these things before we call it a day. Let's drop in police and fire first. And before we do that, let's hit play for a minute to clear up these sewage icons. And then we will pause it again. So we've got our emergency services here. Fire department will be first. And this has, just like hospitals, dump, everything else, an area of coverage. So you can see where it's green, it's good. It doesn't quite cover all the way up into our industry. It starts to get a little dark there, but they will get there. It's just gonna take them a little while longer. Now, I am gonna take a chance and drop it right here. Um, but the thing to be worried about, because one of the most expensive buildings you have is your power plants. Uh, if the fire department can't get there and it catches on fire, not only do you not have a power plant, but you don't have power. So your whole city might go dark. You can lose buildings, businesses, tax revenue. So do keep in mind that you want to have good fire coverage for your industry, especially your power plants. So to help that out a little bit, I'm going to actually switch to police first. Put it right there. Same thing. It prevents crime and has that coverage area. That way the... Fire department is just a tiny little bit closer to that rotary and should cover into our industry just a little bit better. Now we've spent a ton of money already, but we've also unlocked a second loan. So let's go ahead and take that out back into our milestones for a moment. And this is really what I want to focus in on because this is kind of the heart of green cities right here. Once you reach that second milestone, you've unlocked self-sufficient buildings and organic and local produce. So how do we go about defining a nice little green neighborhood? Um, well, let's do that. Let's fix our water problem down here because we don't have coverage. And let's spin off a new neighborhood. I don't want to do it too close to the industry because we don't want to put our nice green eco-friendly neighborhood right next to the, uh, the polluting area. So let's spin off right here off this intersection. We'll do something a little different. So we'll come in, we'll do 12 units off the road again, so that we can zone everything and have that little bit of space in the middle if we wanted to do a pedestrian path or something like that. And let's do a very small rotary off of here. So we'll connect to our curve tool. We'll go to our one-way roads. And when that next line clicks, so that's 10 units when we're out here, as soon as that line shows up, that's five units. So we'll do that. We'll just do five units. Zoom out a little bit. We 
We have a very small rotary here. But it will help traffic flow in and out of here. And now we'll do a couple of neighborhoods off of this. So we'll come out this way on our straight tool. Say 10 units in each direction. And we're just building a little bit of space for some houses here. So we don't want to come in too far. Let's come out to here. This is gonna be a very small neighborhood to start. Well, let's say we want our greenhousing to be over here. Maybe we can separate it later with planting a bunch of trees and kind of, you know, separating out a bit from the rest of the town. Uh, what we want to do is we still need to define it, say, as residential. So let's define some residential living space out here. And then the next thing we need to do is on the zoning tab, there's also the uh, districts. It's a little different, separate out a little bit differently on the PC, but you can go to your district painting tool and we're going to paint this as a district, anything that we want to be uh, a part of this. So let's definitely cover this neighborhood well. But we also want some commercial space to move in. So let's look at our zoning again. We haven't zoned any of this off yet. So let's zone some more commercial space. I'm going to do a little placeholder of a road right here so I know where not to zone because I don't want to override anything that that's already moved in. But I don't want to overlap it too much and we'll dezone this over here. This is just me nitpicking. You don't have to do this. OK. So we'll switch over to our commercial, and we're gonna do the street here again. So four units off the street. And we'll go across. Now I'm gonna undo, let's see. I'm gonna undo this piece right here. And then, you know what, we could even have some, some little organic shops right here not on the rotary itself. So we've got some zoning. Now we go back to our district tool here and I want to make sure I cover all of the commercial I just did. And now we go over to the specializations tab. So under residential specializations, you've got two options no residential specialization. This is just the default houses that come with the game, nothing special about them. The self-sufficient buildings is something that's new to green cities. So when you mark this on a district, the buildings become more eco-friendly, or I should say the buildings that build there become more eco-friendly. If you paint this on an existing district, it will move those houses out and new houses will move in if you have demand. But these houses are gonna use less electricity, they're gonna produce less garbage, but they also generate less tax income. But the benefits should come pretty close to outweighing the loss of the tax income because although you're bringing in less money, you as a city have to spend less on garbage collection and less on electricity. And it gives the buildings a new look and feel, which is nice. So let's go ahead and select that self-sufficient building and we'll just click on that district. And now anything that's zoned in there that moves in is gonna adhere to that policy. We can do the same thing with commercial specializations. So no commercial specialization is just the default buildings that move in the commercial space. Again, same as residential. But with organic and local produce, this changes those buildings so that they're organic shops, electric car charging stations, things that are just more green. So the nice thing about this is it produces 50% of the goods locally which means that it's gonna reduce truck traffic in the area. Uh, commercial buildings need to take in products to sell that might come from industry, that might come from the outside world, whether it's highway, 
cargo plane, cargo shipping, but that creates traffic on your roads, this will help reduce it. Now, these do use more electricity consumption, but reduce garbage. There's always a problem you have to deal with, but overall, I think these add some really cool mechanics into the game. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint that option right on here. So any businesses that move in here are going to be organic and local produce, less traffic on the road, and any houses are gonna be more self-sufficient, but lose us some tax income in the process, but that is okay. I think it's worth it overall, especially to see the new mechanics in game. So let's water this neighborhood, because we haven't done that yet. Now it won't let me connect a pipe right there, so let's start kind of a new grid pattern. We'll just connect it in that way. And we'll come down to where we think we'll comfortably cover that street. We don't need more than that for right now. We'll come up 440, which again creates that perfect little overlap and we don't have to waste any pipes. Let's go ahead and hit play. We've got a little bit of commercial demand, so hopefully some of these businesses will move in. There we go, there's our first organic and local produce shop. Let's see what we've got. Not a very exciting build, a really small one considering the size of the lot. Little farm stand, little farm market. We've got our first self-sufficient building moving in and we've got a lot of problems happening in the background. So let's fix that real quick. <laughs> this is something that um, I didn't do in the previous series because it does require you to kind of constantly come in here and manage. Let's just crank this up to 85. Let's hit play. That should solve our power and water problems. I'm not even gonna look at the info views right now. And we do have a fire happening here. We have our fire department on the way over. Excellent, thank you. I'll stop that from spreading to the other houses. And let's go look at our first self-sufficient residents that are moving in. Now, one thing is these, these do have a more modern look and feel, which is nice. But they do, when you have large neighborhoods, them kind of look a little drab um, because most of them are brown. They don't have grass, uh, or if they do, they're on the roofs. You know, if we look at over here at some of our um, standard houses, they all have grass lawns. Watering grass is kind of, you know, unfortunately a waste on the environment. It does look nice. Uh, but you'll see these houses don't really have grass lawns. They'll have more trees gravel driveways, you know, so they have a different look and feel. It's a nice way to kind of uh, mix some things into your city. And as we expand out, this is pretty much going to be our default. I especially like the high density residential buildings that you unlock later on in your playthrough when those have the self-sufficient buildings policy defined. It's it's really cool. Um, but that is our first episode of Let's Play. But if you do want just some tutorials on green cities alone, once we've unlocked all the different things and mechanics, I'll separate out that into its own video. But for now, that's the start of Santa Rico, our new city in City Skylines. We're gonna be building this one out. Um, I've got some ideas, some little things that I wanna try. Definitely wanna get away from the grids, but again, for those of you that are new, it's a nice, easy way to start your city. But we're gonna buy this tile over here, start to expand on the waterfront. We've got some nice curving coastlines, some little forests there, and rather than kind of build over those, I'd like to kind of work with the coastlines and curve neighborhoods around these trees. Um, you know, maybe even find a way to sneak something up into the mountains there and have something in that little valley maybe. We'll try and do some fun things with it as we talk about the different mechanics. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. Comments, shares, all that really helps the channel a lot too and are greatly appreciated. If you're new here, consider subscribing for lots more City Skylines and other great gaming videos. And while you're at it, consider hitting that bell to get notifications because it's very easy for small channels like mine to get lost in the shuffle. Stay tuned because I'll be stay tuned because I'll be bringing a lot more City Skylines content here in Santa Rico, and we'll be talking more about green cities and city skylines in general as we build this city up. And hopefully we'll find out more news about the rest of the season pass, which again, at this point, I would think is going to be uh, industries and park life. And both of those are a ton of fun on the PC. Uh, I think this one though uh, is one of my favorites. Park life is a close second. I do really like designing and kind of building my own parks. 
I'll have some other updates coming to the channel soon, but until the next one, this is Move the Mouse signing off.